Good day, everyone. You are welcome to the radio station and TV station of RGCB and Radio TV. Uh, my name is Abdullah Adebayo Abdurrahouf. Welcoming you to the program, which is known as Know Your Right Under the Law, which always has its recurrence on uh, every Sunday by 10 a.m. till uh, 11 a.m. every Sunday. Uh, this program is brought to you with a conjunction of IGC Bioyo, Online Radio and TV, and Abdullahi Legal Academy. Abdullahi Legal Academy is an initiative that caters for dissemination of legal awareness to the general public and at the same time organizing resort driving law tutorial for law students across the faculties of law in Nigeria. There are many programs that the Legal Academy is organizing in order for it to achieve these two aims. Uh, and this is one of the programs. It is the Radio Legal Awareness Program. You can contact the Legal Academy. You can reach the Legal Academy on YouTube and on Facebook with the username Abdullahi Legal Academy. And on, on WhatsApp also, you can just text the word ELA to 09034904883. On this program, last two weeks, we started a new topic, which is known as the, uh, the right of landlords and tenants under the law and that first week we explained the meaning of a landlord and the meaning of a tenant within the eyes of the law also we've explained last week we are able to explain what is known as the uh, the rights what are those rights that a landlord south will enjoy under the law and how does the law protect the rights of a landlord under the law today by the federal God, we will be explaining how the law uh how the law protects the right of a tenant under the law as a landlord has his own rights so does a tenant also have his own right and the right of a landlord must not be infringed so does the land the the, the, the right of a tenant must not be infringed the both of their rights must never be trampled upon but what are those things that a landlord has out to be enjoyed? We have explained that last week. What are those things that a tenant out to be enjoying? Are those things that we shall be explaining here today by the grace of God? Last week, when I was explaining something, I made mention of something called trespass. I will enter to the, to, to, into the topic today by explaining trespass in relation to the right that a tenant out to be enjoying. And that will be the first right that I'll be, that I'll be explaining here today. The first of that right that a, la, a tenant has, and that uh, and under which the law is being used to to, to 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 prevent a tenant from being oppressed and to protect the right of a tenant is that a, the law is protecting the tenant also from a trespasser. A trespasser under this uh, under this law 
can be anybody, even the landlord. After the landlord has transferred the possession of his property to the tenant under a tenancy agreement, the landlord does not have the right to enter that property anymore arbitrarily without the consent of a tenant on that or on that land. If it, if it, if a landlord does so, he will be used. He will be he will be made to face the wrath of the law under the law of trespass. Now. Can a person now say, ah, because it is my house, can I just enter my house anytime, even though I've just given him, a, as a tenant, I've just given him a part of the house to be living for a, free, for a particular moment of time, although he's paying me money, but it's still my property, I can use it the way I like. Yes, it's your property, you can use it the way you like, you can enter the property, you can go out of the property, you can annihilate the property, you can even sell the property as much as you like, but if a tenant is in that house, you cannot enter the property as much as you like. You cannot go out of the property as much as you like. You cannot do anything you like, just anything you like with the property. Even though you can sell the property, yes, you can sell it, but the, 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 the next landlord must also know that he, 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 he has inherited some tenant from you. And that right that the tenant must be enjoying under you, he must also be enjoying it under the new tenant or under the new landlord too. So this is one of the ways by which the law is using to protect the right of a tenant under the law. And if a landlord sees that a tenant has not paid the rent for a particular moment in time, can the landlord just go into the building and eject the tenant out of the building just arbitrarily? Just because I have a contractual agreement, a, a tenancy contractual agreement with a landlord and my tenancy agreement has expired and I've not yet renewed it and I still remain in that house. Can the landlord just come one day and send me back out of the land just like that? No, the landlord can never do so. And this is one of the ways by which the law is protecting me against any other person, even the landlord. This will make me to explain some of the types of tenancy that we have. For example, now there is something called contractual tenancy, and there is something called tenancy. Uh, yes, there is something called contractual tenancy. Under that of contractual tenancy, we have something called the tenancy at will and periodic tenancy. Tenancy at will. I will explain that answer another time, but periodic tenancy, if it's periodic tenancy, it means that I'm renewing my tenancy maybe weekly, monthly, quarterly, or yearly. This is periodic tenancy. So within some period of time, I will be paying for the rent to the landlord at that particular moment in time. So now maybe I have a contractual tenancy with my landlord for one year and after one year i'm not being able to pay you know subsidy and every other thing has made the economy to be worse and everybody is just uh, trying to man up everybody is just surviving now the the the, the thing are the things are tight and because of that i'm unable to pay my landlord my due rent can landlord come into that house and eject me out of the house can he just come out one day into, the, in the, in the, into that house one day and tell me that Mr. Abdullah, get out of this building. I don't want to see you here anymore. And start packing out my loads out of the house. Can he? No, he can never do such. He can never do such. And this is one of the ways by which, is one of the ways by which the law is protecting me. The reason why he can never do such is that immediately after my contract, my, my tenancy contract with the landlord expires, I see. I, I I am no more a contractual tenant. I now become a statutory tenant. Statutory tenant in the sense that I become a, a, a tenant within the confinement of the statute that established that is regulating the relationship between the landlord and tenants in Nigeria. So by this, the landlord can never come and say that Mr. Abulai pack out of this house without following the, the, the due process of law. The landlord must follow the due process of law before he can ask me to pack out of the house, even though I'm unable to pay at that particular moment in time. And because I'm a statutory tenant, I must also be enjoying everything as a tenant. 
statutory tenant, the, the difference between a statutory tenant and that's a lot of a contractual tenant is just that a statutory tenant, uh, the, 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 a statutory tenant is just holding over. He doesn't have any contract with the landlord anymore. And even though he has a contract initially when he was entering the house, his tenancy agreement has expired. But that of a contractual tenant, everything is due. Everything is duly provided for him by the, uh, by, 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 by the tenant at a particular moment in time. But even though my tenancy agreement has expired, I must still be enjoying that house until maybe I say I do not want to enjoy it anymore. Or the landlord has followed the due process of law. Do not forget when I was explaining who is a tenant. I made mention that a person whose tenancy agreement has expired in that house is also a tenant and he must still be enjoying that property as much as he still remains there until what? Until the landlord follow the due process of the law, maybe to eject the tenant out of the house or to do anything to determine the tenancy of such a tenant at that particular moment in time. This is one of the ways by which the law is protecting the tenant under the law. Now, if a landlord sees that this tenant is not paying me, can he just come onto the building one day and start removing the roofing sheets so that if rain falls, it will be falling directly into my room and by implication, my property will be destroyed. So if I see that my, pro my property is being destroyed, won't I leave the house? Yes, of course, I may leave the house if I see that my property is being destroyed. But the landlord does not have the right to do so. If a landlord dares to do so and he removes the roofing sheet of a building on his tenant that is not paying or that has not yet renewed the tenancy at that particular moment in time, and it does so, the landlord might be old, might, might be held responsible for what? For the offense of trespass. He might be held responsible for the offense of trespass. And do not forget, trespass is a criminal offense. At the same time, it's also a civil offense. If, for example, the landlord does so, and the tenant sue the landlord into the court of law, the landlord will be made to pay for those properties that is inside my room that the rain destroyed. One, he will be made to pay for that property. At the same time, he will be made to pay me compensation for trespassing into that building, into that premises, onto that land at that particular moment in time. So this is one of the ways that the law is also protecting me, if we against the tenant or against any other person. The landlord cannot just go onto the land and say that this is what I want to do with the land. But after you have transferred the possession of the, of, of, of the land or of the building or of the premises to the, to the tenant, no, you cannot just do as you like. You can only do as the law has permitted, not as you like anymore. Even though you are the alpha and omega of your land, of your premises, of your building, but once you have transferred the possession to another person, you are not the alpha and omega anymore. You must do. You are. You may still be an alpha and omega, but within the confinement of the law. You must only do as the law has stated. Not as you want to do, but as the law wants you to do. So in this circumstance, if a landlord does so for a tenant, the tenant can sue the landlord and recover those things and recover money, compensation for those things that have been damaged and at the same time, recover compensation for trespassing onto that property. Because at that particular moment, the tenant owns the possession, not the landlord. And the person that owns the possession at a particular moment in time is the person who has the right to sue another person for trespass, if the situation warrants so. Now, another thing is that if a tenant, for example, because I just packed some questions here so that I want to make sure that this lecture is held today through answering questions about what is happen in our society today we have seen many times when a landlord will just go onto the building and remove the roofing sheet what kind of barbaric barbaric action the landlord will just remove the roofing sheet on the tenant and the rain will start falling and 
will destroy the property of the tenant. The tenant can sue the landlord and recover damages under the law. The law permits those. The law, the law does not permit the, the, the landlord to do so, but the law permits the tenant to do what? To, to, to sue such a to, 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 to sue such a landlord and recover so many co compensation. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. The tenant might just be owing the landlord maybe thirty thousand naira per month, maybe thirty thousand naira, just thirty thousand naira. But if the tenant sued the landlord, he may recover nothing less than one million naira from the landlord for the offense of trespass, and at the same time, special damages for the property that the act of the landlord has destroyed. Another thing is that can the landlord tell me that I must have been in the house before? A particular time in the midnight, maybe the landlord can just come and say, Hey, you, Abdullah, do not come into this house anymore once it is 7 o'clock p.m. Because everybody must have entered this room, must have entered this building before 7 o'clock p.m. Can the landlord say so? Because it is his house, it is his building, he can do so, right? Yeah, right? Can he do so? No, he can't. He can't. He can never do so. Because of what? The law is protecting me. As the law is protecting him, the law is also protecting me too. Unless we both have an agreement when I was contracting the tenancy agreement with him that, yes, Mr. Abdullah, anything after 7 a.m., nobody will be allowed to enter these premises. And I saw it and I signed that, yes, I agreed. Yes, I cannot go back on my agreement. But if there is no agreement as such effect, um, if the, ten, if the landlord says I should not enter by 7 p.m., I should not enter immediately after 7 p.m. as clock because it is his house and he has the right to make any law that is regulating his house for any, any time in life. Yes, I will tell him that by the law, by the law of the federal program in Nigeria, if we check into the relevant laws that regulate the relationship between the landlord and tenant in Nigeria, you have transferred the position of this house, of this building to me. And I have the right to enter it anytime I like. I have the right to enter it anytime I like. And if you dare, if you dare to deprive me of my right, I have the right to sue you and recover compensation, damages from you. That is what I will tell my landlord. My landlord. Because of what? Because I know my right. It's not as if you are being wicked or any other thing. But because you have, you know your right. You can enter the building by one he him. You can enter the building. Even by 5, p 5 a.m. in the morning, and you can enter the building by 12 a.m. Because of what? Because you are the one who owns the procession at that particular moment in time. Not the landlord. The landlord can never tell you the terms of or how you will be using the property because he has transferred the procession to you. Unless you have both have an agreement when you are contracting the tenancy agreement that this is the time that I want everybody to be entering into my building. And you have signed the agreement, you have not contracted the agreement, you cannot go back on your agreement. But if there is no agreement to such effect, you have the right to sue your landlord for saying so. And if the landlord dares to lock you outside, you have the right of action under the law. Another thing is that if a tenant refuses, let me say refuses to pay his landlord or is unable to pay his landlord the rent due at a particular moment in time, can the landlord use the police to arrest the tenant for the police to force the tenant to pay the rent at a particular moment in time can the landlord do so can he can he can he do so we've been seeing so many scenarios like that today when the tenant won't be able to pay the landlord and the landlord will be using police even the so even soldier even the military to to do what to threaten the tenant in order for him to pay or to pack out of the building if a landlord does so to a tenant if a landlord does so to a tenant, the wrath of law will be made to be fair on such kind of a, a, a landlord because of what? Because the tenant knows his rights. The first of the thing is that once it is a civil matter, not a criminal matter, according to section four of the police act of 2020, the police have no right in definitely to the arena, in even having anything to say about it. Because of what? Their duty is to to make sure that they investigate crime and at the same time arrange a criminal in the court of law and make sure that they do their proper investigation if it is criminal offense. But for civil matter like relationship between a landlord and a tenant, no, 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 no. The police have no say. And even section 32, section 2 of the uh, of the police act also say that the police act has 
no right to arrest any person over a civil matter. The, 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 the police can never arrest a tenant because the tenant is unable to pay his landlord or even threaten the tenant to pay because the landlord is unable to pay the landlord. No, the police has no right to do so. They have no power. They have no authority. They have no authority to do so. This is another thing, and this is another way by which the law is uh, uh, protecting a tenant against all other people, even the, 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 the landlord and any other people. Another thing is that the landlord sometimes may invite the police to arrest a tenant, but it must have a criminal element. For example, if a tenant is suspect, suspected to be a criminal, the, the landlord can just blow the whistle and tell the policemen to come and do their job. Yes, that is allowed. Or the, 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 the tenant commit any crime against the landlord. Maybe he slapped the landlord or he beat the airline of a landlord. <laughs> he can tell the police to come and arrest the tenant. But if it is just a matter that, not, that does not, uh, uh, that does, that does not ex, uh, uh, expanded that does not extend it, that does not extend to criminal matter. The police have no say in it, and the landlord can never and can never invite the police to come and arrest the land the, the, the tenant or to even come and invite the tenant to the police station in order for them to make a no 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 the police has no say in it. I would like to stop here, but before I stop. I have been saying this for a long time ago that if anybody wants to learn anything concerning video editing and also video creation, you know, when we are talking about video creation, we're talking about all those videos that you are watching on TV, on Facebook, the one that you are watching on, or, or, or on Netflix, on wherever you can watch any visual content. I can create it and I am teaching people on how to create it. If you look into your screen now, look at the highlights. These are, these are some of those things that you will learn from it. One, and the second thing is that, and the second thing is that, and the second thing is that you will be, you will be given the opportunity to, 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 to have an on demand video online. You can buy the course online. You can buy the course online. You can buy the course.
gram as soon as you can see DSC. that follow us in our program because yes this is because this is a kind of a show of love it is because you you love us that's the reason why you are with us on the program and we shall always be grateful to to you so let me just check through the comment section here if i have one or two questions with us on the okay program and i think we don't have any we don't have any comment here and at the same time we don't have any question so let me check under that of yoruba segment because uh we had a network issue we have a uh, we, we had a technical issue the other time we were about to finish the lecture i think we don't have any comments here also just one from the engineer from or your time or your state that is complimenting us yes let's let's actually do that have liked this uh program so far uh mr Befatai yusuf we see your hand. We are very grateful. Mr. Monday Ofem, we are very grateful. Mr. Kennedy Masood, we are very grateful. Mr. Elelaye Sainab Yabo, uh, Mrs. or Miss Elelaye Sainab Yabo, we are very grateful. And Mr. Kokola Ibrahim, we are very grateful. And Mr. Ad Mrs. Mr. or Miss or Mrs. Adebayo Juliana Christiana, yes, Miss or Mrs adibayo juliana christiana we are very grateful and at the same time we are also grateful to some people mr el eniola oluwa gold we are very grateful to you too mr tijani said abiodun we are very grateful to you mrs or miss olanike olanri we are very grateful to you Mr. Debimpe Abdul Malik, we are very grateful to you too. Mr. Bakari Azim Kendi, we are very grateful to you also. And at the same time, uh, the entirety of Adelgo Academy and that of Mr. Bioyo is very grateful to our engineer in the studio here in the name of Mr. Abdul Akim. We are very grateful to you. We are together i'm not the only one in the studio today that's the reason why you are seeing the visual on the screen i can't be doing this and also being there uh without me uh, getting effort from an engineer that will be with me in the studio i'm very grateful to you engineer for a wonderful and kind job that you've done so far it's another time that you and i shall be meeting here on this program where uh, I shall come here and explain some of the uh, some of the things that we ought to know under the law. Abdullahi Adibayo, Abdullah is my name. Do have a wonderful legal day ahead.